Hello, welcome to the Liturgy of the Word, Children's Liturgy. My name is Tish, this is my husband Mike. Hello. And today we're celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter. So we're going to start with the prayer. God, our Father, you want more than anything else to share with us all the good things in life. That is why you sent Jesus to tell us about you and show us the way. So when we get tired of doing good, make us strong and determined again and help us to believe in you more and more and more. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to do the first reading. And the first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul came to Jerusalem, he didn't want to join the disciples there, but they were afraid of him. They didn't believe he had become a follower of Christ. So Barnabas took him and introduced him to the apostles. He told them how Saul had seen the Lord on his way to Damascus. He told them that Jesus had spoken to Saul and that now Saul really did believe in him. He told the apostles how bravely Saul was telling others about Jesus. So Saul stayed with them in Jerusalem and preached with great power in the name of Jesus. Because of Saul's preaching, some of the people tried to kill him. When the disciples heard that Saul was in danger, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him by boat to a city called Tarsus. With the help of the Holy Spirit, more and more people came to believe in the Lord and to follow his ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Okay, let's do. Okay, we'll do the response. Lord, be with us. Lord, be with us. With your love. With your love. Be with us. Be with us. All our hope. All our hope is in you. Is in you. Very good. Now we'll do the gospel acclamation. I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the life. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Very good. Now we'll do the gospel. And the gospel is the first reading from the gospel of John. So for the gospel, we do what? That's right. We stand up out of reverence and honor, and then we make the sign of the cross how many times? Three times. Correct. Here we go. So we start out. The Father is up and down and then across. And we do that because we ask the Lord to open our minds in a sense to understand what's being read because uh, sometimes it's very hard to understand. Then over our lips, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember what we heard. So we might get the chance to tell someone else what we've learned, and they might not know. And then over our hearts, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember to be more friendly and neighborly to everyone we meet this week. Now we listen to the gospel. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. When you are part of me, I am living in you, and you will do great things in God. But if you are cut off from me, you can't do nothing. All those who do not stay part of me are like dry up branches that can only be gathered up and burned. But if you are a part of me and you live, by my words, 
you may ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. When you do good deeds, you show that you are my disciple, and you give honor and glory to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Go and have a seat right where you are now. Okay, so I'm going to explain the gospel. First reading, Michael's going to explain the gospel. In the first read and reading, Saul, who is Paul later on. But Saul comes to Jerusalem. Okay, now this is when he has his experience. He falls off the horse, you know, going from to Damascus. And when he falls off, he hears God's voice. Okay, and so when he... When this dust storm goes away, he finds out that he's blind and he can't see. So he depends on the travelers to help him to the city next day, the next city, and he waits there. Now Barnabas is the one that hears him, and so he goes to help him, okay? And he's the one that, you know, they talk. And so, Saul dedicates his life to the Lord, okay? Now, he doing so, remember, Saul's a very, his personality is very dynamic, okay? Before, he was a bad guy, you know? And he was very well known for being bad, you know, for collecting the taxes and hurting the people and stuff like that. But now he's good, he's sorry. And he's good. And so now the people don't trust him, you know. But he's preaching the word of the Lord. And he's and so now he's converting them, you know. And so, but then his life is in danger because some people still hold a grudge. And so they endanger his life. So he has to be put in a boat by the apostles and sent away, you know? And so they could save him because he has a lot of work to do. And the Holy Spirit comes and helps to convert the people, okay? So in this story is that, you know, we, ha we learned that, you know, you're ba you can be bad, but with God's forgiveness, you know, you do, you can change and do good, you know. And you have to forgive. You have to have mercy. And so we, too, you know, have to learn to forgive and to have mercy for others, but also for ourselves, you know. If we, you know, we get in trouble, we have to be asking for forgiveness, and we have to ask for mercy. So it works both ways, you know. So just try to remember, you know, try to forgive and try to be merciful, okay? In the gospel, it talked about the story of the uh, branches, the vine, and the branches and uh, the, the main part of the vine. So in doing so, he's using this as a comparison that if you took a tree or a vine, and you cut off a limb, can it can survive on its own? Theoretically, it won't, or it won't for very long. And if it did, it would be very stunted and would only be able to do a little bit. So with it all attached and intact, the vine can go crazy and get a lot, a lot of fruit, and the tree can grow really huge and stuff. So Jesus uses this comparison because a lot of the people in the time zone used to grow grapes. Vineyards were a big thing. The more vineyards you have, uh, the more wine you can make, the more grapes you'd have. And so that was a very valuable crop at that time. So this is why he uses vineyards and fruit trees a lot. In doing so, he also uses the story that Jesus is the vine. He's the one. If you want to get anything done, ask him for help. 
And if you're doing good with it, he will bless you with these things so you can make it whatever you were going to do even better than it was before. So he's trying to remind us that uh, sometimes we forget we want to do it on our own. But to always remember, uh, maybe you're going to school that day. Please, Lord, help me today at school so I may do even better and maybe help someone. So including him into your plans of the day. So your day can go even better than it would have been or even more helpful than you might have imagined. So, and then remember to thank him at the end of the day. So this is what he wants us to do. He knows we can do a lot of things, but with him, we could do even more, uh, even easier. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, now we have six. Oh, three. We got two six. Two, okay. Okay. On May 2nd, we celebrate St. Anastasius. He was a bishop and a doctor. He died in 373, and he's well known in Egypt. He spent four years in prayer and solitude in the desert. He wrote The Life of St. Anthony. He defeated the church, the faith, and because of his humbleness and charity, which he treated his enemies. Okay? So that's St. Anastasius. On May 3rd, we have St. Philip and St. James, and they were apostles. The first century, they were, and, and they were well known in Palestine. They're the patron saints of Uruguay, and Jane is the patron of Drugus and the dying. Okay? Philip had a practical, down to earth mind, and so he, he did a lot of preaching. And James preached the gospel and was the first bishop of Jerusalem. Okay? So those are the saints of the day. Mm -hmm. Of the week. Okay, let's say the Apostles' Creed all together now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, now we'll do... Now we'll do the saints, I mean the prayers of faith. I'm sorry, the prayers of the faithful. We pray for the church, for Pope Francis, for bishops, priests, and deacons, religious and all who serve the people of God in love and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our parents and family members who love us and care for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishioners who may be sick or alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay. And we also pray for anything that you think of, uh, whether you're at home, in your room, outside, in a car. If you think of someone to pray for or something to pray for, Simply say it to yourself, ask the Lord to hear that prayer, and we hope he answers it as quickly as possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Thank you so much for being, being with us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Okay? It was good to see you. Bye-bye. Alright, thank you.
you're watching, tell a friend. Jesus, we are.